Hi, I'm Marlon Walker and I'm live from Pelham's Wasteland and today we are going to be doing character creation, March character creation mayhem for Spycraft 2.0 or Spycraft 2nd Edition by Crafty Games. Um, so I don't know that much about the history of this particular game. Um, I know there is a spy craft and a fantasy craft, and but I don't know which is from when necessarily. But I know that these are, um, so there was a spy craft first edition, and then there is spy craft second edition, and then there's fantasy craft, which I actually have uh, print copies of fantasy craft, but I didn't grab them for some reason. Um, of at least the core rule book. But my understanding is that this is a um, kind of D20 era, D20 style game that um, is designed to have some kind of particular elements that are um, sort of unique to these particular games. I don't know how compatible the different Spycraft games are with Fantasy Craft, um, although I suspect you could probably do something compatibility-ish with them. But anyway, um, but yeah, so Spycraft, the, the first edition, my understanding is that it was a full-on kind of D20 system game, and so you needed to have another uh, core rule book. And then Spycraft 2E, it says, specifically calls out that it's an OGL-based game, and therefore you don't need any other books for it, which is kind of a cool concept, right? Um, so anyway, Spycraft 2nd edition is designed for playing in kind of modern day scenarios based on the d20 engine essentially you know roll a d20 trying to roll high versus a target number with modifiers based on all sorts of different things um spycraft apparently um has a fair bit of um tinkering that you can do with it as the game master or as the player to kind of build the specific flavor of game you want to play and it also has um one of the things that kind of first interest me interested me about it is that it has a couple of different um kind of expansion or source book books that have things to um play using the spycraft system in more of a um cartoon based uh world and in particular there are a couple so there's i think it's uh Transmex is what they call the Transformers-ish one, and there's Real American Heroes, which is the G.I. Joe-ish one, and I think there's one maybe for Gargoyles, the animated show about Gargoyles. Um, but anyway, that's something that interests me and I think is cool, so anyway. Um, but yeah, we are going to create a character for Spycraft 2nd Edition, so let's go to the sheet. Um, I'm not going to know, I don't know what character name and career name, well, player name, that's easy. Arlen. Um, first class level, I think they're going to be a warrior. Um, Spycraft has some pretty cool elements with regard to how kind of multi-classing and prestige classing works, um, that it's designed to be relatively easy to add more base classes. And then because it's based on this kind of third edition um, framework, there are a number of essentially prestige classes that you can add to a character as they grow to kind of specialize them in certain directions and all that sort of stuff. So I think the class we're going to choose is warrior, but that's actually not the very first um, step of character creation. So anyway, creating a character. Step zero is character concept. Um, we're going to play a badass who shoots people and punches people and all that sort of stuff because that's what I like to play. Um, and then we have determine attributes, choose origin, choose base class, skill points, feats, interests, a subplot is optional, calculate derived values, describe your character, and choose gear. So let's do some attribute stuff. So normally you would have 36 points to build a character, and then every attribute rank has a specific points cost. We are going to play with 40 points because I want to build a slightly more capable character. And we're going to start with, let's start by giving 16 strength and 14 dexterity. 16 strength and 14 dexterity. So that is 14 plus 8 is 22 points. So we have 18 points left. 18 points left. Um, we probably want, so we want high constitution and wisdom 
um, I assume we are going to want wisdom for things like, you know, um, perception checks and the like, but I don't know how important that is in this particular game, but I guess we will see. Um, <laughs> so let's do, let's do constitution of 14 also. So that's another eight points and that leaves us with 10 points left. So then we could do a wisdom of 12. That's four. And then we could do 12 charisma and 10 intelligence. So that would be all of our zero, zero points left. So that is all of the points that we have for this character. So his, his top attribute is strength, and then he's got okay and other stuff. Um, those stats, those attributes are going to change probably as um, we go through. So we might go back and tinker with these to get things where we want them. Um, but basically, there's, uh, yeah, some important bits. Um, specifically, the talents um, often add a number of things. So let's see what sort of talents we might want. Um, for origin, so the, the second step is origin, and origin is made up of a talent and a specialty. And the specialty is sort of a what's like your what it what are you, what did you do before you joined the spycraft thing? And a talent is sort of a you know what are you naturally really good at and all that sort of stuff. So I think we will um <laughs> vigilant looks pretty good. That takes down our charisma, but it boosts our wisdom. I think we will do that. So our talent will be vigilant. And we will boost our wisdom to 14 and our charisma back down to 10. So that's not so good for us in terms of the charisma, but I don't care about that. You know, plus one bonus with all skill checks made to determine surprise. Where are we going to put that? Um, I think we put that. I guess we'll just put that under class or feet abilities. Maybe feet abilities would be the place to put that. I don't see an obvious place to do surprise. Um... So yeah, let's put it under feet abilities. Vigilant. And that will give us plus one to surprise rolls with further boosts later. Because we get um, additional an additional plus one at career levels 4, 8, 12, 16, and 20. And then we also get your threat range with notice checks increases by one. This bonus increases by an additional plus one at career levels 5, 10, 15, and 20. So, um, vigilant threat range or notice plus one with further boosts. Later. I'm not going to type out the whole when we get things, but that is a, a thing to remember as we go forward. Um, I guess notice is right here, so that's, yeah. All right, um, doo -doo -doo. let's see, let's see. So that is our um, trait, and then I think specialty will probably choose warrior, because that seems good. Um because, you know, that's a whole thing. But let me look through the origin options real quick. Um, Soldier of Fortune might be good, too. That sounds fun. Let's do Soldier of Fortune instead of Warrior. Um, Soldier of Fortune. Soldier of Fortune is our specialty. Uh, yeah, you are or were part of a private military in which you learned many practical applications of violence. So we get a bonus ranged combat feat. Bonus ranged combat. So we'll put that down. We also get the tactical weapon proficiency. So tactical right here. Um, gain one acquaintance grade contact. So, uh... Name acquaintance one uh, 
one acquaintance great help if I could spell, especially since the stuff is right on the other screen or even next to it, whatever. Um, do, do, do. You get a plus one bonus with a tax check made as part of the auto fire action. So let's add that there. So we get um, fortune plus one to tax with auto fire. And we get additional bonuses at different levels. Cool. So that's our that's one of our special things is that we can be good at blasting people. And that's what we want to do. So all right, now we need to choose a class. We are going to choose a soldier, which is the kind of most fighty class around. Um, do, 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 do. So let's go to soldier. An unmitigated powerhouse in any combat. The soldier is the team's martial backbone, providing the firepower necessary to bring down any menace. Other characters may become competent fighters, but the soldier was bred and trained for war. It's his calling, and he answers without hesitation. So we have got um, our attributes are good. Vitality 1d12 plus con modifier per level. I'm going to say that we get max at first level, and therefore we get 14 vitality for first level. You might want to roll it in your game. I don't know. Um, all right, class skills. Um, we get athletics. We get drive. We get intimidate. We get notice. We get a profession class skill. We get resolve. Res QR resolve there it's just hiding search survival and tactics cool 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 um yeah so that is our stuff we get a core ability called accurate so let's do class abilities accurate your finely honed physique is your deadliest weapon. Each time you spend one action die to boost an attack check, you roll and add the results of two dice. Um, roll two dice for one when spending an action die on an attack. Cool, cool, cool. Um, class abilities. We also get some, oh, so we get six starting weapon proficiencies. So let's put that, I guess we'll put that here. Six weapon proficiencies would help if I could spell as usual. Um, plus two for level one. Yeah, so at level one, you get two additional weapon proficiencies or one additional basic melee ranged or unarmed combat feat or a combat feat. So we might do a combat feat because that might be useful. Fortunes of War, that's level two. There's some higher level stuff at level four. Weapon specialist at level six. Portable covers at level 10, at level 14. Excellent, so that is the stuff that we get for being a soldier, it looks like. Um, Accurate and fight on, yeah, that's our, our stuff. And we get one W for gear. One W. One W for gear. And I don't know, I assume that's one weapon. We get uh, some other stuff. We get a, da, 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 da. where is all of this? We get a plus one base attack bonus. Is that gonna fill it out everyone? It is, look at that. Uh, we get a plus one to fortitude. We get a plus two to will. That's nice. Um, <laughs> plus zero to reflex, plus zero to defense. And we get plus two to initiative. Yeah, and then we also get our plus one from Vigilant, right? So we could put that in there too. Oh no, that's for surprise rolls. Hmm. Okay, well, we'll figure that out. Um, yeah, but our initiative there, we get plus two to that. We get zero wealth. 
So let me put that in there. Um, do, do, do. Zero wealth right now. Um, do, do, do. And the one W, which I assume is one weapon for our gear. All right. What do we need next? It skipped a step in the chapter, so it's going to tell us to go somewhere else, I'm sure. All right, page 87 for spend skill. Oh, wait, how many skill points do we get as a soldier? Let me go back through this and figure out how many skill points we get. Um, we get four plus initiative modifier times four at uh, plus intelligence modifier times four at level one. So um, four plus zero times four gives us 16, 16 skill points. Not so many skill points right now, but that's not really our thing, of course. And now we will go to page 87 and we will look at what we do for skill stuff. So purchasing skill ranks, one skill point per rank for class skill and two skill points per rank for a cross class skill, classic stuff. Um, career level plus three is the max. So very much like 3.5. Um, <laughs> so let us see what we might want. I guess we'll put, <laughs> we'll put two here into athletics. We will put uh, two into notice and two into resolve. And we will also put two into survival and two into tactics. So that is one, two, three, four, five, uh, five skills that we've put two points into. So that's 10 points. So we have six points left. I think we will up our notice to three, up our resolve to three. So that is four points left. Let's give ourselves one in drive, two in drive and two in intimidate for the whole thing. Yeah, let's do that. Um, anyway, and then we also have the, I guess we can worry about the threat range stuff and all that later because um, we get the vigilant threat range boost and all that. Um, Excellent. So let's go back to character creation and do the next step. Go back to, all right. We now need to choose feats and then choose interests and subplot and derive values and all that sort of stuff. So let's do interests first, and then we'll go choose some feats. Interests. Class level zero, each character gains two interests, additional interests based on these things. And it's hobbies, pastimes, all of that sort of stuff. Interesting, interesting. So we will add, where do we put that? I guess maybe we put that under some of these, in lifestyle maybe? I don't know. Conditions. I don't really see an obvious place for interests, um, but I guess we will, yeah, you know, we'll just leave it. Let's put it, let's put it under, um, maybe it goes under subplots, but I don't know. Um, I'll just put it under possessions right now. So interests, broad enough. There are some suggestions in here. I like the suggestion of classic cars because that sounds like fun for a game like this. Um, <laughs> uh, sport American football. All right, so that is our interests. Our, our character likes classic cars and American football. That's his thing. Um, we're not going to do the subplots bit because I think that is more important for um, a group game and things. Uh, 
At every level, your character's wound points are equal to the constitution score. So we have 14 wound points. So we get more vitality as the character levels. As our character levels up, we'll get more vitality points, which are sort of, you know, roll with the punches points. But wound points are when you actually get uh, knocked around. So each is equal to the character's wisdom score. All right, so subdual damage threshold is 14, and stress damage is also 14 for both of these. So there's some interesting stuff there. Um, unarmed attack bonus is, yeah, there. Regular melee attack bonus and ranged attack bonuses, yep. And the base attack bonus is in there. Saving throws, defense. We need some armor, potentially. Um, initiative bonus. Special check bonuses. We have the knowledge check bonus, the request check bonus, and the gear check bonus. And I think those are all being calculated correctly. And then, uh, yeah, I think we don't need any more of that. So I think we are down to feats and gear as our character stuff. So let's go scroll through the PDF and find this is skills and I want feats. We've already done skills. Um, so let's go to feats. All right, so Acquiring feats. One feat from specialty, career level, based on the career, and then we might get a feat. We might choose a feat based on our um, things that we can get. Oh, so we need to go back and look at the what all characters get based on their overall level. Um, class. All right, we have our action die. We have three action dice of a d4. Maximum score rank of four, bonus feet. We get a bonus feet. So we have, we'll have, I think, two or three feats total. Bonus level feet. Then we might get one more depending on what we see. And that is cool. I guess we should spend our weapon proficiencies. So let's get rifle, shotgun, sh submachine gun. Handgun, that's four. Uh, edge, uh, unarmed and edged. Yeah, and then I guess we could, so we could add blunt and explosives, which might be useful for throwing grenades and stuff. Let's do that. Blunt and explosives as well, um, instead of another combat feat. And that is all of our weapon proficiency. So we're proficient in a ton of things. Not as good at some of the exotic stuff, but you know. And we, we don't have vehicle weapon at all, so that would help too, probably with our drive stuff. But anyway, um, basic feats. Hmm. <laughs> We have got some armor stuff here available. Let's see, is there a feat tree listing? Maybe in a chart? Yeah, here we go. Um, <laughs> Combat. Combat instincts, combat mobility. That might be good. Fire team basics. Hmm, that seems pretty cool. But guts also seems pretty cool. Ha ha ha. Mm 
and hoard basics. Iron will, lightning reflexes. Surge of speed, tactical advantage, toughness. Maybe just something simple like toughness, to be honest. Your vitality points increase by your base fortitude save bonus. Well, that's not a whole lot right now because we just get the one. Although, obviously, as we level up, that'll be more. Um, <laughs> some wolf pack stuff. What about, honestly, even something like quick draw might be really useful. Quick draw, twice per round, you may take a draw weapon, alter weapon, reload as a free action. Yeah, hmm, there's so many cool things. What am I gonna choose? What am I gonna choose? I think I might choose Iron Will, even though that doesn't seem quite as good as some other things. Iron Will, plus three to Will saves, plus. Plus three for effective stat for damage thresholds. So that's the idea there is that we'll have um, a plus three for our will saves. So we'll have a pretty good will save, which I think is relevant in this game for things like covering fire and suppressive fire is that the idea being that you have to, you know, basically steal yourself to run out into the hail of bullets type thing, classic. And then also having a higher threshold for subdual damage and stress damage seems useful too for somebody who's gonna be fighting. And now we need a ranged combat feat. All right, um, do, 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 do. what might we want? Auto fire basics. That looks good, bullseye. Hmm, CQB basics. Ooh, that looks great for us. Let's do CQB basics. Um, do, 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 CQB basics. All right, so that gives us a couple of things. Plus one to attack and Damage at CQB range plus two to threaten with readied ranged weapon and Ignore some penalties in CQB. Cool, and I'm going to put that down here to fill that in. Um, all right, all right. That is all of that. And then I think we need some gear. So gear works a little bit differently in this game, which is to say that generally what you do is that you uh, basically you can switch out gear as you work for your uh, your your organization or team or whatever. Um, but we are going to let's see what sort of gear might be useful. Um, vehicles, resources, security gear. Um, doo -doo -doo. Ooh, look at all of the guns. Oh, and this. Hmm, that's cool. There's a lot of stuff. I think you actually... You might build some of this? I don't know. It looks different than I was expecting. Um, all right. 
A bit of armor, potentially. Trade calf, armor, protective gear, upgrades. Okay, I'm not actually going to worry about the gear. I will just say there is a ton of gear available and there are a bunch of different, um, whatchamacallit, uh, extra books that have tons and tons of different gear. If you are the sort of person that loves to have your particular, you know, your, your particular Walter PPK, um, you can definitely find that in the books and all that sort of stuff. But I'm not going to worry about that right now because I think it would be very easy to just kind of totally go down the rabbit hole for this. I guess we need a name for this person. So we will have a code name and a character name. What's the code name and the character name be? I think the code name should be something... Um, Let's use the code name Jackhammer, because that seems like a fun code name for a badass soldier, especially with all his kind of close quarter stuff and, you know, smashing down doors and all that. And his character name will be the turd. J. Richard J. Martel, which is sort of, right, the joke being that Charles Martel, uh, the Frankish king, um, they called him the hammer. So anyway, the point being, uh, yeah, Richard Martel is, uh, or Jack Hammer is our uh, warrior who is uh, a pretty serious, tough badass. And uh, that's for Spycraft 2nd Edition. So anyway, that is, wait. That's the one I want. Um, so that's Spycraft 2nd Edition. There's a ton of stuff available. Um, it's one of those games that I don't think you're going to, you know, it's not really like a, a kind of OSR sort of thing where you're going to just, you know, roll up a new character all the time. Although there are some clever rules in there that are designed to allow stuff more like that. So I think the, the term used for the rule is called the revolving door, where basically you can, you know, churn through player characters but the expectation is that um, players get to keep a number of the things that they kind of earn through play for the next character that sort of thing um, which is kind of a cool concept for a, a sort of uh, more militaristic game um, but anyway that's spycraft second edition so yeah i hope you guys have enjoyed um yeah i, I hope everybody is having fun doing well Staying safe, staying healthy, and having lots of fun playing games. As always, I've been Arlen Walker. I've been live from Pelham's Wasteland, and I will see you next time. Take care, everybody.